I just remove the temporary uh, from this particular solid abutment uh, implant and it's in the number three position. First thing I'm going to do is take a preloaded pre-comp syringe with an end spiral brush tip uh, to apply uh, astringent and we're going to use just a small amount of astringent X and continue to go in a circular fashion and scrub any areas that are seem to be more fibrous than others so these tissue tags must go and our next step is to take an air water syringe this is a 20 gauge tip on uh, an air water syringe and we're just blowing gentle air just to see if we've left any tissue tags behind and we'll continue to scrub the area uh, prior to the next step which is uh, now utilizing the number seven Siltrax uh, packing cord we're going to lay this ever so gently just under the rim of the uh, solid abutment and it's going to go in between the tissue and that of the margin itself just subgingival to the margin now we're using uh, everything from a uh, even the suction tip is a 20 gauge suction tip needle and that also can be used to push the cord under the rim of the implant so we're keeping it simple keeping it dry at all times we like the cord to go completely around the implant until the area of the buckle so we we'll start at the buckle giving us access later on to remove the siltrax cord via a, a small tail and um, and so again getting that to that point we're right at the point now where we're going to take a pair of scissors and just go ahead and trim off the excess on the uh, the tail of the Siltrax 7 so we have easy access uh, later on to remove that after we cement the crown uh, our next step is to verify that everything looks good and that we don't have any other tissue tags or any other inflamed areas of concern and this next step that's coming up uh, is going to be to actually place the uh, impression coping to allow that tissue to be pushed down just a little bit further so we're going to continue to use the suction tip and go back in and rescrub the area to make sure before we have that uh, last uh, step before we cement our crown and it will be a porcelain fused to metal crown utilizing a cement called Reliax which is a a composite cement very difficult to remove the cement in the subgingival zone so we're going to keep that cord in there uh, up until the time we cement it and and allow that cement to set so here comes the the uh, impression coping we're going to go ahead and snap that in place and right on top of the siltrax cord so we have siltrax cord now is being seated subgingivally and there is our impression coping in place and we'll let that set for a few minutes come back in use a little bit more astringent or all the way around 360 degrees around the impression coping uh, you might think that we're ready to take an impression at this point. Well, we do do the same procedure, only without the Siltrax cord in there for the final impression. Uh, here we're utilizing both because we want it bone dry before we cement in our, our uh, final crown. Again, we're scrubbing now with the soap. Here I'm going to take a little bit of Vaseline on a micro brush and I'm going to go around our metal to ceramic crown now going in the gingival zone in the emergence profile area I'm also going to take some of the Vaseline and lubrication, lubrication all the way up into the contact area as well be very careful not to get it on a margin or inside the coping at this point uh, we do use a microscope for every procedure we feel it's important to give ourselves the best uh, view that we can we can have to do this type of procedure. All right, 
and that will go right over to the refrigerator to cool the crown down. We know that temperature is a factor here, so we like to now go ahead and cover the the screw hole of the implant with just some orthodontic white wax. We'll go ahead and apply that now and we'll clean off the excess with a long explorer. Uh, now I'm utilizing the Hollenbeck and I'm going to come right in with the long explorer and do a thorough job of plugging that hole just in case we ever have to go back in there. Also we're keeping the air from entrapping in the uh, into that vent hole for the screw. All right, rechecking with lar large explorer around the abutment internally, as we would do if we were taking an impression as well, and uh, cleaning off the contact areas. Now we're going to bring a little bit of lubricant in to the contact areas to allow that cement uh, to n not bind to the contact zone of the adjacent teeth. Once we do that we should be good to go for cementing. Dental assistant already has mixed the cement. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, she will mix the cement rather uh, after we have pulled off the impression coping and recheck the uh, the, the uh, Siltrax number seven cord. Uh, we utilize the same steps now using the 20 gauge suction tip coming right in with that and going 360 degrees around the abutment margin and you'll see on the next uh, blow up here we're going to take you right up to about 12 and a half power maybe even 20 power to show you how nice and clean that area is and it's ready for cementing look at that nothing whatsoever to impede the cementing process. Now we got the crown cemented. We're going to go ahead and use our brushes to clean up the excess cement. We'll use the Bendex brushes and get in there and get that all clean. Once we get off the excess cement, I like to go ahead and tack it in with a uh, bonding light. We'll do about a two to four second uh, tack in on both buccal and lingual aspect. This will uh, ensure that we have um, uh, our cement will be cured at the margin, both buccal and lingually. The next step is just to go ahead and fulcrum my uh, finger right to the top of the crown itself so that uh, when I go to s remove the cement, I'm not going to dislodge or accidentally dislodge the crown itself. So you can see the little tail waiting to be pulled on now by the, uh, or at the buckle, that little piece of Siltrax cord which is so important, so vital in the cementing process here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that and all the excess cement will come up right with it just like that. We know that there has been no impingement whatsoever of any of the cement below the margin of the implant itself. Now we're getting to the point where we're going to use a uh, very thick floss. Uh, we also we'll use that in combination with the Vaseline on the floss with a small knot that's placed in the middle. The dental assistant went ahead and, and had that all ready to go and that's all these uh, uh, these uh, important instruments are ready to go. They're on the patient's bib so we go in step-by-step -step process. Now I'm going to recheck uh, contact areas for cement, occlusal areas for cement, and we're going to bring in the articulating paper and this is the last step to make sure that our patient is comfortable um, with this procedure. And um, it's quite uh, simple to see that uh, this should be a holding contact right in the center of the crown. And uh, our basic philosophy is to keep it simple. And if you uh, enjoyed this video, uh, please do please give me a call if, there, if you have any questions.